Lines are one of the most common sketch entities used in SOLIDWORKS. The Line tool creates single line segments in a sketch. Horizontal and vertical lines can be created while sketching by watching for the feedback symbols on the cursor. Sketch relations can also be added as lines are drawn to create the 2D sketch profile. Center lines, which are also known as construction lines, can also be created in the same manner as regular lines. The primary difference between the two is that center lines will not be used to create feature geometry. However, they can be used to create geometric relations between different sketch entities, and they can be dimensioned themselves. Center lines can also be converted to and from regular sketch lines, making it easy to create 2D sketch profiles. In this lesson, I'll recreate the shape of the sketch profile using different options for the line tool. Then I will demonstrate how to add center lines to both sketch profiles. Finally, I will demonstrate how to convert between lines and center lines within the sketch. Here I have a sketch that was drawn using the line tool. To demonstrate some of the aspects of sketching with lines, I'll recreate this profile in the same sketch. I'll click on the sketch in the feature tree and click Edit Sketch from the Flyout toolbar. To begin drawing a line, I must first activate the tool in SOLIDWORKS. The Line tool can be found in the Sketch tab of the Command Manager. In the Tools drop-down menu under Sketch Entities, by pressing the S key to access the Shortcut toolbar, and by right-clicking in the Graphics area and selecting Line while in Sketch mode. Once the tool is selected, the Property Manager updates with a few options. The Orientation box has options for how the line is to be drawn. The As Sketched option allows the user to draw lines without any specific orientation or endpoint locations. The Horizontal option forces the line to remain horizontal as it's drawn, and in this case is parallel to the x-axis. Additional parameters also become available in the Property Manager. The Vertical option forces the line to remain vertical as it's drawn, and in this case is parallel to the y-axis. And the Angle option forces the line to be drawn at an angle, which in this case is relative to the positive x-axis. Additionally, the Horizontal, Vertical, and Angle line options can set the length before drawing the sketch entity in the Graphics area. However, setting this length does not dimension the line. The Options box also has options to make the line for construction, or in other words, to make it a center line, and there is the option to make the line have infinite length. If I select the Angle option from the Orientation box, an additional option, Add Dimensions, becomes available for the line. If this line is checked, SOLIDWORKS will add the length and angle dimensions for the line once it is drawn. To start drawing a copy of the sketch, I'll make sure the Line tool is activated and select the Horizontal option. I'll hover my cursor over the endpoint of the existing horizontal line, and an inference line appears as I drag my mouse to the right. Notice that the cursor appears with a pencil to indicate that I am in sketch mode, and a blue line appears under the pencil to indicate I am sketching a line. I'll click to start drawing my line. Move the cursor to the left to continue increasing the length of the line, and place the other endpoint by clicking in the graphics area. This creates the horizontal line in the graphics area, closed off by both endpoints. I'll click the green check in the Property Manager to complete the horizontal line, and I can see I'm still in Insert Line mode. Next, I'll draw a vertical line connected to the left endpoint of the horizontal line. I'll select the Vertical option, click on the endpoint of the line I just drew, move the cursor upward, and place the other endpoint, if I want to exit the Sketch Line mode after I place this endpoint, I can press the Escape key to exit. In the next video, I'll draw some additional lines to finish sketching the profile. With the two sketch profiles complete, I'll add some center lines to both profiles. To add a center line, I can go to the Sketch tab of the Command Manager, click on the drop-down tab next to the Line tool, and click Center Line. I can also go to the Tools drop-down menu under Sketch Entities. Or I can right-click in the Graphics area and select Centerline from the list. Or I can press the S key to bring up the shortcut menu 
and click on the drop-down tab next to the line tool and click center line. The property manager appears, which uses the same insert line tool. However, the property manager has automatically selected for construction under the options box. I'll leave the orientation set to as sketched and create a center line between the two endpoints of the angled lines of the first sketch profile. The next center line I will create will be between the midpoint of this construction line and the midpoint of the line at the bottom. I'll hover my cursor near the midpoint of the line at the bottom. Click on the midpoint, move upward, and click to place the endpoint at the midpoint of the center line. Notice that I can continue sketching another center line, which I will connect to the midpoint of the line at the top of the sketch, and press the Escape key to exit the center line tool. I want to create these center lines again on the other sketch profile. I will draw them using the regular line tool and then demonstrate a couple ways to convert the lines to center lines. I'll activate the line tool and draw the lines as I did with the center lines on the other sketch profile. First, I'll change the line that connects the two angled lines into a center line. I can do this by clicking on the line and in the Property Manager, I can check the box next to For Construction. Click the green check, and the line is changed to a center line. Next, I'll convert the middle vertical line. I can change it to a center line by clicking on the line, and in the Context Toolbar, there is an option for Construction Geometry. And when I click it, the line converts to a center line. I'll repeat this again for the middle angled line. However, I'll access the Construction Geometry button by right-clicking on the line instead and selecting Construction Geometry from the Context Toolbar at the top. Now the two profiles have matching center lines, which can be used for additional relations and dimensions. Any of these lines can also be switched back to regular sketch lines using the same methods. Continuing with the sketch profile, I'll draw an angled line. I'll click on the Line tool in the Command Manager. I'll choose the Angle option. In the Parameters box, I'll set the angle to 45 degrees. Then I'll start my sketch at the end of the vertical line. Move the cursor upward and place the other endpoint. I'll press Escape to exit out of the sketch line mode. Lines can be easily modified while in sketch mode. Endpoints can be dragged to new locations, changing both the angle and length of a line. If I click and drag the endpoint of the angled line I just sketched, notice that the line can change angle and length depending on where I place the endpoint. However, if I move the endpoint that connects the angled line to the vertical line, the vertical line changes length and position. The angled line changes length and angle while keeping its other endpoint fixed and the horizontal line changes in length. These lines perform this way because two of the lines were specified as vertical and horizontal when they were created. Lines can also be modified by dragging the line itself. If I click and drag the angled line, notice that the line's position and length change while the angle remains the same. The vertical line also changes in length. Keep in mind that these lines are modified according to their added relations and dimensions. The next line segment is perpendicular to the angular line that was just sketched. To access the Line tool, I'll press the S key, select Line, leave the orientation setting to As Sketched, and click the first endpoint of the line. Notice that inference lines appear, which I can utilize to make the line perpendicular to the previous line. As I extend the length of the line, Another inference line appears, letting me know that the endpoint will be horizontal to the same endpoint on the other sketch profile. Once these two inference lines are present, I'll click to place the other endpoint. Notice that a perpendicular relationship was added between the two angled lines. Once I have placed the endpoint, I can continue sketching lines sequentially since I began drawing the previous line in the As Sketched mode. To complete the sketch profile, I'll draw another angled line. Place the endpoint for the angled line, and then continue down and end the line at the first endpoint of the horizontal line. This closes off the profile, which has the same shape as the originally drawn sketch. SolidWorks also exits the sketch line mode once the profile is closed off. Now these profiles appear to have the same shape, however, they are not identical. 
If I wanted to make these two profiles identical, I could use the Smart Dimension tool found in the Sketch tab of the Command Manager, which is covered in another lesson.